Well, good evening. It's really strange to be here because usually directors have this kind of question and answers. After the movie, usually we are over there. So sorry if I look like, I, I, for myself now, I, it seems, really, it seems uh, to me that I'm a really important person in this moment. This is really strange. And that's now I understand how politicians get so important because they're standing like this and talk to the people from this position. It's really interesting. Uh, anyway, uh, well, thank you so much for inviting me here on this house of cultural art. It's really beautiful. And it's so nice to see you here. It's so nice to see a nice bar in something which is connected with art and culture because, as you know, film, as you have been to Berlinale, some of you, it's also about not only about art, it's about eating, drinking, and getting around with the people. And part of that will be the subject of my, I will say, lecturing. I will say sharing experience with you. So, as you can hear, my experience comes from filmmaking. I'm basically a filmmaker, so I'm really glad that somebody here called me professor. It's not how I really um, feel myself. I think I'm a filmmaker, and from that point of view, I will try to share my experiences. And a subject of my sharing experience will be, is film still important? And this is not something that I will give you answer. This is something that we can discuss later, because this is something that I'm still questioning myself. And I think if you are in filmmaking, and even if you are not in filmmaking, you should ask yourself that question, because this question gives answer not only for me, filmmakers gives answer on, in uh, how our pulp culture, pulp culture of our society has developed on, or uh, not developed. So in sharing my experience, I must go a long way back ago, like I'm being hypnotized and going back in time. So going back in time, I must go back in a time of, uh, believe it or not, in time of communism. I'm old enough, so I remember it. And for me, like, as you can notice, in one point in, in, in uh, our pop culture history happened something which I will call fall of cinema. And from my point of view, it happened in the same time as the fall of communism and as the fall of Yugoslavia, which I have also witnessed because I'm from Croatia. So basically what happened? So I was in my, I was 18 or 18, 19, 20, uh, around this, Ages, that's really funny a sound for, uh, for uh, SMS. So anyway, <laughs> I, was, I was in my really early period of life, like you are now, and I was witnessing something which somehow I know that will, uh, it will be history later on. So let's see what the filmmaking, what movies were before, why do they were so important, and what was happened into them later and how these movies were a kind of uh, building not only our society, but it was building ourselves as human beings. So before, not only before, I will say not only before YouTube, before internet, before everything, you have cinema. During this period, computers were nothing. Computers were like, I, I think I have more gigabyte on, not on this, I think, my, my notes for this lecturing wouldn't fit in my ZX Spectrum, which I had back then. Is anybody remember this computer? It's like memorabilia. You can find it in, in Berlin stores for memorabilia. I think it's, 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 it's a joke. And from that joke, you cannot imagine that something that, like YouTube can happen. So the only way to see movies was the cinema. An important thing about cinema was you cannot fast forward it. You just sit and watch. Whatever it comes, you watch. And it was the only information. TV program in that old Yugoslavia was really lousy. You had like, you had two TV channels and you have movies twice a week. It was Wednesday and it was Saturday. And if you miss that movie, nothing else will happen. And usually that movie is like, some of them were really good, but usually these movies which were presented to us through Croatian, tele I mean, uh, Zagreb television at that time, was a movie that were really controversial. And the most important thing in socialist countries, the movies were getting six months later than the rest of the world. So the Star Wars happened in the United States and six months later you had it in your movie theater in Croatia. And so because we were kids, we didn't know the world, there was no internet, 
And uh, the only trip I had was in Venice with my uh, grandmother and my mother to buy some things which you couldn't buy next Yugoslavia. And it was only because Venice is actually pretty close to my hometown split when I was born. And the only information about the world was filmmaking. So uh, the first time I saw Naked Body was on film. The first time I saw somebody uh, getting in fight was on film. The first time I saw somebody getting drunk, somebody getting in love, somebody getting angry was on film. And there was no other way to know about these things except to get in this dark room, which is called cinema, and watch it from beginning to the end. And of course, because of that, criteria was really low. I remember, I remember that like I was really frustrated, and then uh, the friend of my father called somebody in cinema to get me a seat. I was like a kid before. It was before the breakup of Yugoslavia, everything, to see Spider-Man. You don't believe that Spider-Man existed before this new spider but it was Spider-Man, it was filmed from Hong Kong. And Spider-Man was dressed in some kind of latex suit, and he had even a belly. <laughs> and this net was like a fisherman's net. It was really funny, but for us it was wow. It was a little bit strange because we knew it could be better, but it, still it was a Spider-Man. And I know the, the biggest forgery of all was like once appeared a, a movie poster, and on movie poster in that time said, uh, Man of Steel against Bruce Lee. So it was a movie about, uh, it's supposed to be a movie about Superman fighting Bruce Lee. And I bought a ticket, there was no Superman, there was no Bruce Lee, there was no two guys from Hong Kong fighting each other, college. So anyway, but we bought all of this. So you can imagine when something like Star Wars appeared, that we were, wow, what's that? And, but in that period, we understood this is something, okay, what happened when something like Star Wars appears? But if you remember a movie like Last Tango in Paris, what's that? It's the first time that somebody was doing an erotic movie. Or if you remember like movies like Apocalypse Now, it was like one of the first anti-war movies. Or even before, if you remember movies like uh, the, Br uh, the Bridge of River Kwai, which was also saying something anti-war, uh, it was also anti-war message. So people were knowing lives through cinema and in that point of view, Directors was also important. Why? Because we were, I mean, people who are doing movies, then times they were opinion makers. So if you put something in a movie, you know that the kids are going to see that and they will act according to this. So everybody was like, like you know, the kids when they were, were, it was really funny, it was something that you don't see nowadays. The kids which were watching like uh, uh, Kung Fu movie went out of the cinema and then they like fight with each other. That was like common thing, okay. So movie was, movie inspired a lot of people to do sort of things. Some movies about people who are uh, 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 driving a car inspired people to drive a car or some simple things, some stupid things. When I saw a movie The Last Falls from Martin Scorsese inspired me to start playing guitar. So, you know, people were inspired by the movies and the thing is that the cinema made you concentrate on something which was on the screen. Because its situation is like this. For you, there is no other option except to listen to me now. You can go away, of course, but when you're internet, you have many options. You start watching one movie, then you start watching another. I think I saw, I saw don't tell that to anybody, but I was on internet seeing three Oscar movies simultaneously just to see which one I liked. So I continue watching one which I like the best. I won't tell you which one it is. But anyway, uh, the, 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 the reason I'm telling you all this, it's like to get to the point, is the movie still important now? And in one period of time, it was really, really important. But I wouldn't say that movies were important. I will say the cinema It's what made the movies important. And today, in ages of, on YouTube, and I think I'm, I'm as, as you can see, I'm a little bit older than you, so YouTube for me is still the top of my communication through the world. <laughs> I think things are getting much faster now on many other platforms, but let's say that YouTube is something that I know at least. So on YouTube now you can see film Pretty Woman. And for me it's unimaginable. You need, I, I, for film like Pretty Woman, I paid the ticket from the Ticket smuggler. There was ticket smuggler in front of the cinema. You cannot believe that. And they were selling ticket overpriced. So you buy ticket from them, and then you see something that, that you just see on YouTube. You say, wow, that's, that's something. And what is even more important than this, that people were after art house movies. 
So when Breathless by Jean-Luc Godard appeared, people were going to cinema like hell to see it. Even when I was a student, I went to Zagreb from Split and I wanted to see some Bergman movie, not even the most popular one like Boyle Strawberries. And I went to cinema like 50, 50 minutes before and there was no tickets. So today, when you go to see Bergman movie in Zagreb, there is like two persons in movie theater and they're like, and you, they look like freaks, you know. And what I want to say that before, before the YouTube, before everything, not only the movies which are funny or which are entertainment were popular, there were also other movies that are popular, they were changing people's ideas, people, people, uh, people's lifestyles. Not to mention, which is also now impossible to think that people were going to jail because of some movies. In ex-Yugoslavia, there was something called Black Wave, and it happened simultaneously in Serbia and in Croatia, which were the biggest regions in ex-Yugoslavia. And because of these movies, people were prosecuted because they were saying, how can you do that? And how can you uh, show our society in this way? But because they were prosecuted, that movie became extremely popular. And because of that, people were changing their, uh, their, their opinion about democracy, seeing that democracy is not what the, the, the government, the socialist government is giving to us. Democracy is something different. Democracy is my feeling. So the cinema always presented uh, always for me was some kind of freedom. And it's really, we get to that later, it's really important to say, and it's like kind of strange that I sense that freedom more in a, in a cinema back then when there was no political freedom and today when there is so much political freedom, so to say, I don't sense that freedom anymore in the cinema. I will tell you later, we will discuss about that and I will tell you why I think it is, it is important. Anyway, to get a little bit in that, I think what actually, if you, if you know about Berlinale Film Festival, what created this festival was idea, there was a festival who is able to put the movies from Eastern Bloc to the Western Bloc to people to see what's happening behind the Iron Curtain. And in one moment, everything fell apart. Iron Curtain went down, Yugoslavia went down, and somebody invented this bloody thing called VHS, this, this videotapes. Okay, so you put the videotape, you don't go to cinema anymore. And important thing, you can fast forward it. And you can go back or you can sell it to somebody, you can rent it to somebody else. You can even put two movies on one tape or whatever. But still, tape had something, some dignity because even then, the, there wasn't so easy to reach to the right movie on some tape. So uh, now I'm telling how, how, how perception, how, how media change our perception of film as art and how that through media change also the importance of, of making the movies. Uh, so the tapes were still things that you can search for controversy. So the first movie that I remember that was released on tape, but there was still cinema really popular, was for example, Done by Law by Jim Jarmusch. Because this was the first time that I went to the cinema, I saw something which is like state of the art. Something that, it's an art is always about freedom. You cannot make art if you are not free. So that was like something which really changed my opinion and opinion about my generation. I'm a small, small city about art house. What, what is art house? And through the tapes, people were less and less going to the cinema, which of course led to the situation that if you want to go to cinema, you have to find something really attractive. And the thing is, to find something really attractive, cinema has to be more expensive. To make cinema more expensive, they were changing the system of how to do, how to do it. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, if you look at today Hollywood cinema, what they say when I was speaking to some Hollywood producer, the main things that it should be understandable to anyone. Let's say if you see Breathless by Jean-Luc Godard, you cannot say that this film is anybody can understand it, but everybody could like it. But the way that the system is functioning now, there has only one reason, and it's really funny. It's like in the deep core of American film industry. I'm not really 
uh, into this thing, but what I heard from people who are living in the States and who are filmmaking for a long time, so in the beginning, these big studios were owned by artists. So there was this big studio called United Artists, and it was founded by Douglas Fairbanks and Charlie Chaplin. Okay, so there were artists who were running these studios. And even if they were doing some funny movies, like, I don't know, uh, Hunt for uh, Green Diamond, or they were like movies from the 80s, or they were doing like movies like uh, the, the uh, Officer and Gentleman and t telling you about movies from the 80s, still these movies have something which filmmaker could be interested in. And then something happened, people saw there is money in this thing, there is money in this thing, people can go, and there's money in this thing, and there is, there is, the, the problem is that everything's, everybody's switching to video, everybody's going to television, and so big studios were bought by companies who were actually doing video games. So the, the ideas, the, the film changed, maybe in the moment that Sony company bought one of the major film studios. Because people who are into video games are about, it's, 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 it's more about money. So the thing is, what I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm probably, I'm not sound like one of the persons who are saying about big old, old, good old times. It's nowadays you have cinema which is concentrated on the big productions. Like you have Lord of the Rings, you have like uh, uh, Star Wars and so on, and then you have this totally art house movies, which you can see on Berlinale and which like normal people don't look. So that's why I'm, that's where I'm pointing out. I'm pointing out that film is now important, but only to the certain amount of people, and film before was important to much bigger amount of people. So when, you are, when you're looking at the cinema back then, you know, I was always thinking about why The Godfather is the biggest movie of all time. It's really interesting. On every, on every list you'll see, okay, Godfather is a big movie of all time. Because it's a perfect combination of something which common man, which when goes to cinema, wants to see, it's fun, and it's clever. And today film, it's like, it's totally like it's bipolar. Film are either fun or either clever. You cannot have both. If you have them both, then you will have another big movie in all time. Uh, look at the movie like Taxi Driver. It's funny. It's new and controversial, but in a way, it's also clever and fun in both ways. Look at the movie, like I said, Bridge Over River Kwai. It sends the message, but in a way, it's fun to look at it. And it's really, under, uh, and it's, for me, it's like pity what, what happened. It didn't happen because of internet. It didn't happen because of television. It happened about because people are greedy. So the big studios are not making movies anymore because they lose kind of conscience. And this losing of conscience has to do, let's go back to the first thing that I said, to the fall of communism. So, in a way, I will say that during communist period, all these big countries had some kind of, even if it's wrong to say ideology, but there were, there, there, there were some standpoints in philosophy of these big countries, of this bipolar world, of, of red ones and America, to fight for. They, they, they were trying to send some message, and after the fall of Berlin Wall, everything suddenly became, became capitalism. And I, I don't know how it's related, but somehow, after that, movie making started to be, on one hand, only big studios, cineplex, on the other hand, festivals, movies, for a small audience, for a really specific audience. So, uh, my, my, my point is what I want to say, it's, it's that what happened in the last 20 years is that we don't have cinema anymore. We have like two, how to say, two, two sides of it. One side you can see on Berlin Festival and it's a movie that if you go to, the, to see that movie, you know that you are part of the crew of the people who are able to recognize this sort of art, and later you can talk about it and tell to somebody that you see something really special, something different. On the other hand, there are movies which is there just to just for fun. Like if you, if you see if you see like uh, uh, new Star Wars, or if you see something like uh, new James Bond and so on. And even if you notice, there is a reason between old James Bond and new James Bond. 
New James Bond is, whew, he's like strong, he goes, kills, he jumps, and, and old James Bond has a little bit charms besides all that. So what I'm saying that movies now, they lost charm, like it, it became so, uh, it became uh, more, a, more a product and a less a statement. And on the other hand, all these movies which are on the festival are all about statement and less about product. The combination of these two things was which, may, which made movies like Godfather or which make movies like Taxi Driver or like, uh, I don't know, the old Fellini's movies like Amarcord so great and so popular. So I'm, I'm still believing, of course, in a cinema and I think a cinema is still the most important thing if you want to transfer the message, but I think that if, if we want to make a new cinema, you should be provocative. We should try as a filmmakers not to go to the audience that, which we already know. So I know if I make a movie, I go to the Berlinale Film Festival if I'm lucky and if they like my movie, and I'm saying same things to the audience which already knows these things. For me, I would like to say something new to the new audience, but in a way that audience can understand it. For me, for my experience talking about it, I know that if I make a movie about peace and about how all the people are the same, for me it doesn't make a point to tell that to the people like you all already knows that. What we as a filmmaker should do, we should make a movie which go to the wider audience, but not to be stupid and to tell a message. The movie needs to tell a, mes uh, uh, to, to tell a message, yes. Movies has to be fun, yes. Both of these sides should be inside of it. Because if we keep our culture or if we keep our ideas special, if we keep it only for elite, I think suddenly we will get out of our, our, our uh, windows, we will get out of our doors and we will see a riot of the people who didn't get our message because we didn't transfer it to them, we didn't give it to them, or we give it to them in a way they don't like it. You know, sometimes you just have to pack it a little bit and make it more visible to the people who usually don't see these sort of things. How can I, you know, I'm pretty sure that there are now Nazis watching the taxi driver. I'm pretty sure that there are now Nazis watching the uh, Bridge Over Rivers Kwai because these people, and I think if, and I think if you put the message of peace, if you put the message of tolerance through fun, through something which is, uh, which can correlate to the common man, I think this is, this is the best way to do filmmaking nowadays. I think any other way is leading order to just product-based movies or to movies for elite, which is both bad in a way. Uh, and now I will finish it with, with probably where, where, where I have begun. Like, is, is the movie st still important? I will say for us, for us, yes, for us, movies are important. But we have to make it important for all of the people. And to be able to do that, filmmakers must communicate. And communicate in a way that transferring their ideas is not just to about talking to yourself, but talking to the people who are around you, to your audience. And today I cannot say many examples of what I'm saying. I think that things are probably going too far. But I believe, like in a way, cinema has appeared from the darkness. Like in Brothers Lumiere, there was only, people were thinking that this train will drove over them. I think also from the darkness of these days, will appear some light from some media, which is not a movie anymore, which can be something else, which will make a difference. And for us, it's important to know that the same structure, the same motor which runs the movie, runs every other storytelling art. Even call it a video game or call it a YouTube channel or call it a television. So for me it's important to know that like cinema appeared when books were lost. Suddenly, once in a while, if you like, like uh, there were books who were important, then cinema were important, and I know I, will, I won't cry over the cinema, I will a little bit. But I won't cry because I'm sure that something new will come and 
our st storytelling experience we just transfer to this new media, which is coming somewhere. I don't know what it is. Somebody in Google maybe knows. I don't know. OK, so anyway, thank you so much for listening to me. And I'm really open to discussion because I believe maybe I raised some question. I didn't give you any answer. Sorry, that I, I wasn't able to do that. But I was really glad to talk with you about anything which raised in, in my short uh, sh experience sharing. Thank you very much, too, dear professor. So now it's your turn, please. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your presentation. I totally agree with what you just said about cinema being so important and having uh, a certain, uh, and also the background that you gave about that. But I'm just wondering that uh, there were times when cinema was definitely very different, like the examples that you gave. And today, the Uh, today, uh, it's, it's, it's really changing. I mean, we have different forms of filmmaking. Like, I, I don't know, when I'm thinking about cinema, I do definitely think of and filmmakers and also, as you mentioned it also, art house cinema and the other. So it's all there. It has also been a part of our... changing and we have uh, documentary and different, I mean, also different forms of documentary filmmaking and people making movies with their... Uh, so, I mean, I'm wondering if this is not going somewhere forward in a way that we are trying to take this medium, make use of... Let people also participate in it and not just to be, you know, as filmmakers, we are bringing our art forward, but that making it a very uh, accessible medium of communication. Yeah, that's, I think that's a beautiful thing for you to say, but there is a big problem because filmmakers have so much, so big ego that it's impossible, you know. Every director thinks that he's a god. I will bring you my art, and then you will have to see it, and then it's, then it's a big problem. But what you're saying is about something, in, some interactive art that should be possible to change the end of it or to change the beginning and see where we are going. I, as I heard, some people are dealing with that, but I think what is really important, it's like, let me tell you in this way. I I'm, know I'm what I'm talking about, and it's a little part of this lecturing. People, when they used to, in, in, in the Stone Age, they used to eat the, the um, mammal, and then they used to sit and see the fire. So the movement of the fire makes something good for them. It, they were looking at the fire. So not, today people are watching the television the same way. But the way of storytelling didn't change. So it's really interesting when you see, like, if you see, like, pretty woman, that's Cinderella, okay? So if you see, like, every, every movie from, uh, from uh, like, uh, the the Darth Vader is the same person as Gollum. You see, he is the, the black side of somebody, some personality, you know. Gandalf is, of course, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Our body, our DNA responds to the storytelling, not to the media. Media is not important. It can be movies and or it can say it can be video game. But what is important is important that we have a hero and that hero changes and go through some adventure and so on. And people like this kind of uh, 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 stories like Cinderella, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, this is Hulk today or whatever. And I think the, the important thing is that we forget about media and go in the direction of something new. The idea that we can change that, that audience can change that, it's already in. Because if they don't like, they can change everything today. It's like wherever. And I think this crowdfunding that you're probably aware of, it always, it's, it's crowdfunding, but some people who are raising the money say to the audience, let, let us know, would you like some other title or something like that? So I think communication with the audience, it's now really important. And this thing, which I'm really aware of, that people are, when they go to see some movies in Cannes, they say, oh, what's that? Do you like it? They say they like it because they want to be posh, but actually, no, I didn't understand what is it about. And 
this thing can be stopped through the communication with audience. Question? So, in the former Yugoslav, um, during the 1980s, I guess what would be the message of, like, the movie? Taxi driver and all that stuff was kind of um, was kind of posed as like you know post Vietnam and those type of uh, those type of issues and drug use and all that yeah. stuff. So like in a former Yugoslav, like what would be like the main topics and main issues that they would usually show? Well, in more Mar Yugoslav was like the main topic of the cinema that I like that this communism actually is a lie, that the way that they were presenting it to us, it's a lie and that is good only for. Uh, few people who are making themselves extremely rich and in the main, uh, meantime uh, taking all other people for fools. And it sounds familiar like today something, you know, like every time is the same story. So basically, <laughs> like all these stories or what you mentioned about Vietnamar is about that most of the politicians and most of ideology is wrong because it's based off making money for a certain amount of people, which we can see now. And now the masks have fallen down because we are left without any ideology. There is only capitalism and ideology, and we see that people are just greedy. There is no ideology after all. So at the end, I think the movie making about former Yugoslavia and that period, which I like, was about that. But I think movie making shouldn't be only political. I think the, there's some intimacy which goes through the people. But the problem is that when you're living in hard times, you are not allowed somehow to do a movie about intimacy, it's really strange. So I would say subject were political subject, and there was some intimacy. And I think the hardest thing is dealing with intimacy in hard times. So I, see, I think combination of this time, let's say love relationship in, in the era of bringing a civil war on us or something like that. I think this is, this is something which preoccupied the former Yugoslavia filmmaking. More questions, comments, ideas and thoughts? Yes, please. Yeah, maybe I don't have a question, maybe more a comment and uh, maybe a few comments. From your lecture, we've learned that cinema is now is very divided. Uh, you hear me? Well, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, yep. Yeah. Partly I would agree with that, but partly I would also like to... Um, okay. <laughs> um, so, first of all, what I wanted to say, yeah, like, like my friend uh, just mentioned about taxi driver, it was a, at a certain time and it happened because um, I believe that cinema is uh, and movies are mirrors of um, of the, like human vibe of of what is going on in culture, and uh, I think right now um, what you said like a, a peaceful message, I think it's ha actually really happening because people are. Uh, I'm now I am talking about so-called. Uh, mainstream movies, but some of the less mainstream movies now became mainstream. Actually, I will give you um, for what happened, for example, with Tarantino. So at, in the very beginning, he wasn't that mainstream, but now he's mainstream. Everyone knows Tarantino and every, everyone loves him. But it doesn't mean that uh, his, for example, The Hateful Eight doesn't have uh, a meaning. And also the hateful aid, for, for me at least, the message, and I'm not saying everyone have to agree with me, and not everyone have to um, understand the message the, the, the way I do, but uh, it's also shown in a way that uh, is um, 
understandable for, for the society. Yes, so, I agree with that. Yeah. And he is the one of the directors who managed to combine both of these things in one direction. And I think he's one of the rare ones. But if you remember, in the times of our grandfathers, there were directors like Bergman, Antonioni, and I don't know, uh, uh, Fellini or Bresson, Besson, every, every one of them, that was some people. And now there's, there is a bunch of European directors out there in Bernale. Has anybody known one of them? I wouldn't say so, because somehow they are not important anymore. They are not opinion makers. In a way, uh, uh, Antonioni defined our thinking about intimacy when night appeared as a movie. How do you relate to each other as a human being? And I think the main reason why this divide of the cinema happens, because the cinema is unfortunately not like writing a novel or painting a picture. The main thing about cinema, you have to have money to make it. Even now, you have to have, even if, you, if you're doing with your smartphone, which is legitimate, and people do that, you need to have at least $10,000. And $10,000, you have to learn it. And because of that, money in the cinema comes from two sources. Or, OK, maybe there is a first source, like crazy people giving money to some talent. But one source is studios, which have to bring money in. And another source is film funds, which are run by more or less organizations which are connected to the politics. So this is public money. So f f each of them wants something back. The big studios want their money back. So they put big explosions and put the big monsters in there because people somehow love it. And what the film phones want, that's a big question. They want to be cherry on the top of some country which needs some culture to present themselves, or they want to send in a way not directly, their political message. So this divide of the cinema, for my example, has happened that people in a cinema today sees these intentions. Otherwise, I think it's not so honest as before. So maybe to finish with this, that's what we're lacking, honesty. So if, 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 if you're dependent to bring money back or if you're depending on some political structure that gives you money, you're not dependent anymore. And you cannot be dependent. So. I think you mentioned also a good thing about that. Internet is the way to make filmmaker dependent, independent. Okay, so maybe this is also the third way that everybody can make money, put it on internet that says, for you, I will do what I want, no matter how it happens. No, don't, I'm talking too brutal about now. Not every movie from the studio is like that, or not every movie which comes from other direction is like that. But in generally, I have a feeling, and this is my experience, that when you come to the cinema today, you're not going to see something important. Before, when I came to the cinema, I, see, I saw even, I will talk to you about one movie, let's say Emmanuel. So this is an unimportant movie, which tells about something really important, which is sex for people. So in my time, when we were going to see Emmanuela, it wasn't a movie about sex, it's, it was a movie about freedom. Nowadays, when you go to the cinema, even if the movies are even more obscure and much more explicit sexually than Emanuela, like film for Gaspar Noir, you don't have a feeling that you're going to see something important. It's like, oh, we are going to see something which is strange a little bit or whatever, but people don't talk about it anymore. They're, they're, that's not changing the opinion of the world anymore. I don't know why is that, but I think why is that, that movies before had one line had some connection. There was some vibe which connected cinema to the people. And that vibe is gone. And we have to make it work again. We have to work on it. We, we, it must happen again somehow, and we have to work on it. Yes. And we have to ask you, what do you want to see? But I, I would just uh, add something to that, because you're mentioning the times with uh, Fellini and uh, Antonio and yeah. Bergman films. They definitely have made an impact. The, the opinion-oriented film, or even the uh, fr uh, French wave, or for that matter. But wasn't that again uh, a time where some change had to happen? Some people wanted to ch say something different than what was happening. So what what is happening today? It's probably the same thing, isn't it? The, the evol like the evolution. But I wouldn't say that we now don't need a change. I think now, now we need some kind of uh, really, uh, really deep change to make things happen because things can go in wrong directions. Now in Europe, things can go in any moment, can go in wrong direction completely. Believe me, that's not the problem. People were in 39, they'll be like, oh, it's okay, it's nothing will really happen, and then it happened. So what we need is we need some kind of uh, pe people, one way or another, I think the people need, not ide ideology, but they need somebody who is saying something about their souls or about their lives. 
if do, you don't have something strong like that, if you don't have strong guard, believe me who is taking that place. It's a church. And we don't want every time the church takes the place of what our society has to say about themselves. So I think it's like to not have a society which is only one track minded, you have to have art which is influential enough to move the things. That's my opinion. Well, thank you for the, for the conference. I just wanted to ask you, because sometimes it doesn't seem to be enough to be a popular director or to have the right forum. And I will put as an example, Danny Stanovich, yeah. which is, I, I think, a very famous director. He's presenting here one of his, his films in the Berlinale. is Death in Sarajevo. And it's actually, it's quite remarkable that after five days, it's one of the very few films for which you can still buy tickets. So. I was wondering, is it, how, how can it not work? I mean, he's a very famous director. He's got the Burning Alley as a framework yeah. to show his film. So how is it possible that the cinema may not be full? I mean, what do you suggest to send the message across well, to I, the I, audience? I actually, I, I, I'm really good with Danis, and we actually talked about that. And what he's saying is that you just have to do what you think it's important, but also I will say that talking about this movie, which is on Berlinale now, that when it comes to the cinema in a region of former Yugoslavia, which should be addressing to the people and saying something about their lives, the same people for which this movie is made are not going to see that movie, they'll watch Big Brother. And I don't know why is that. Somehow our movies are not sexy and important anymore. People are not, I mean, people are watching them, certain kind of people. You will probably go to see this kind of movies no matter what. But there is no, for me, there is no need to say to you these things because you are there. For me, there is a need to say to the wider audience something which can help our lives and which can change the, the structure of society to be more tolerant or to be more open to certain things. We are open, okay, it's very nice to be here, but outside is a world in which you can get hit with the bottle for something because you said something wrong or you have a different uh, color of your hair or whatever. And this is where we are living. And we can stay put in our little rooms and say this is not happening, but it's actually happening. And before our times, movies or an art were the things that changed the thing because they weren't only after the money or after some kind of privileges. Okay, um, thank you for giving some, some clear advices on such things uh, concerning film. Uh, my concern is, um, I don't want to talk as a student or anything, but there's a lot of sensationalism going around the world. Uh, a lot of like conspiracy theories, a lot of uh, satanic Illuminati and all these things. Uh, I would like you to shed some light on, is it really something that, um, is, it, is, is it taking over the movie industry? Is it something that makes money or is it, does it have to do with a specific agenda? Is it, what is it all, the, what is all this about? Like, yeah, I, I think it creates a lot of... Yeah, I know what you mean. I, I think people like to think there is some kind of structure, like Lord of the Rings, which creates the world and which steals our money and there's, everything was planned and whatever. But I think if you just look at the human soul, we are greedy. So the greed is enough to do things that people are doing nowadays. You don't have to have Illuminati for that. It's just yeah. simple greed. You can call them whatever they want. So I can put you know, some hood on my head and say I'm Illuminati, but I will be still the same person. <laughs> so for me, it doesn't. So, so, so for me, I don't believe in these theories. I think yeah. what these theories are making, is like they make you believe there are some people under the hood who are controlling the banks, but actually these people who are sitting on the table called politicians, they're actually controlling them, and people who are beside them, who are actually like having all the money in the world, are actually controlling them and making you think there is a big 
there is like uh, there, there there are like uh, people from out space controlling the thing, which I don't think is true. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming to be uh, today here with us. Please join me in a very sincere, uh, great uh, attitude uh, <laughs> to uh, express our sincere gratitude to Professor Thank you very Svilicic. much. It was a great pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. <laughs>